Hey, this is OXDF, and today we're doing Advent of Code 2024, Day 3, Mullet Over. Um, before I go into the challenge, um, typically I like to look at these things, at least at the beginning, by um, reading Part 1, doing it, and then reading Part 2, doing it all kind of on stream, figuring it out, maybe playing a little bit between the, between the breaks, but um, my, uh, my video setup was all jacked up, and uh, I already recorded a whole video, and it was not publishable. So we're doing it again. We're starting from scratch, um, but I have already solved it. Um, so part one, um, basically I'm going to get a list of just a big string that looks like junk, kind of like this. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy that. So I have it for the example, and I need to find the mole instructions. Um, and a mole instruction is, uh, it's defined somewhere in here. It's mole X, Y, where X and Y are each one to three digit numbers, and you need to multiply and get a result. You need to find all the mole instructions in here multiply them and then sum them, sum the results to get a result. So uh, let's jump over here into code. I will run my gen day script here on day three to, I, I nuked what I already done. Um, we will create an ex.txt and paste in this here. Um, let's take a look at the real input. Um, it's only six lines, uh, but if I, the alt Z here to wrap it, um, it's not six kind of long lines, not like hugely long, but they're, they're long lines, right? So um, yeah, this seems like a perfect case for regex. So, uh, let's see, we'll come up here and we will import our import re. So we have regex. Um, we're going to look at normally I my, kind of by default in my script, I read in lines, but here we just want to read, um, all the data in one chunk and we'll call it data since it's not really lines. Um, so what do we want to do? Uh, we want to grab, find ourselves a mole instruction here. We want to grab one of these. And so we're going to use, we're going to say, um, uh, if this is right, pairs is equal to re.findall, and we can say use the uh, raw string, and so let's paste this in. Um, the raw string just allows me to use backslash characters as you would typically do in a regex. Um, so we're going to find mol, and then this, we, where we have 506, we're going to do backslash d for digit, and then we want between one and three of those. Um, we also need to escape off these, because we're actually looking for actual parentheses, so we'll escape those, and we'll do the same thing here, backslash d, one comma three. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to find, in fact, look, we can do this. Uh, we can do pairs and we can run Python day three example.txt. And uh, oh, it helps if you give input here to this. So we'll call it data. And we can see we've got the four mole instructions that were mentioned in the, in the thing. Now, I don't actually want the whole instruction. I actually just want the digits. Um, I could capture each digit individually. Um, but well, let's see, what does that look like? If I do it like this here so I put parentheses around them to get capture groups and now if I run it um, I get pairs of things that's probably fine um, we could even so what do we want to we'll go with that um, now I don't think that's how I did it in the first video but we'll do it that way um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, value val for val in pairs so I always like I always sort of just start off with my loop like this and then so so what am I going to do with it so for this val what I want to do for each of these objects. Um, I want to uh, map int val and plot, make each of those into integers. And so we can see what that looks like if we put list on there and run this again. Now we've got a list of vals. We can also do, I think we can also do tuple here, get tuples, but either way, it doesn't really matter. Um, now from there, I want to multiply the values together. So we'll say from math import prod now we can say prod. I think we can get rid of the tuple entirely like that. Just get the product. Let's see if that works. Yep. So now we have two times four is eight. Five times five is 25. 11 times eight, 88, et cetera. Now we've got a series of products and all we got to do is sum those up. So we can sum like that. And we've got 161, which was our answer. Um, we can run this on input.txt and get 184122. And that matches up right here with this number. That is the correct number. Uh, so scrolling down, part two. Uh, in part two, there's going to be a series, there's more instructions added. And there's a few gotchas. In fact, when I originally recorded this, I actually um, started recording again, trying to solve it, went down like a 10 minute rabbit hole that was just not, I don't think was useful to watch, decided to cut the video there uh, and just came back and explained the rabbit hole I went down. I'll do that here as well. 
Um, the first thing that caused me some trouble is if my example up here doesn't actually have any, there is a do here, but there's no actual do and oh, I should explain the problem. So in part two, there's now three instructions, mull, do, and don't. And mull is the same, but once I hit a don't, that means don't process additional mulls until I hit another do, turning it back on. So here I process this mull, I don't process this and this, uh, this and this, and then I hit a do, so I do process this. Um, the first challenge is the example text up here doesn't have the do's in it. There's a do here, but there's no parentheses, there's no don't. Um, so you need new example text. Um, so interestingly, it actually produces the same result, which is nice. Um, if I run this now, I still get 161 for part one, um, but I need to update my example text. That cost me some time. Um, then the next thing was my strategy. And my thinking was, what I want to do is look for a regex, which is don't any stuff and then do. And I just want to remove that string. And then I can pass the resulting string back into basically the same process I did for part one. Um, and I'll show you why this doesn't work. Um, so what that was going to look like was if I do something like um, new data equals re dot sub, and I would say don't like this, oops, this uh, dot star do uh, okay, the parentheses like that. So that's my, I'm going to do that. I'm going to replace it with nothing and I'm going to put it in data. So I'm going to take data, I'm going to find every instance of do some stuff, don't, and I'm going to spit it out. And this doesn't work. And I'll show you why this doesn't work. Um, and this is where I get to use some fun, back to my, back to what I love, command line, let's just do grep minus op. P, uh, o means just show me what actually matches, don't show me the whole line, and p says use Perl style regular expressions. And if we do, like, just search for don't, like this, let's just start searching for do. Cool, okay. And now I can add in an optional NT, and now I got the do's and don'ts. And so what it really comes down to is what am I matching on this dot star? And if I match as I do now, this is a greedy match. It's gonna to try to find as much as it can right here. And so I think it's gonna match on this first don't right here, and it's gonna match all the way through this last do right here, and it's gonna remove everything in the middle, and that's way too, too low. And so you can say, okay, my, I knew that would happen. So I immediately, when I first started doing this, said, let's make it a not greedy match, which basically says, uh, put a question mark here. And that says, you know, try to get the smallest match as possible. The problem is, is it's only going to match from here to here. And then, so when I should turn off here and there's mole instructions in here, those are going to get processed when they shouldn't because they should, they're, they're turned off. So the fact that I, my ons and offs are not regular, that I don't always have an off after an on, um, screws me up here, makes this whole strategy, uh, we're gonna do it. We're gonna we scrap that. We start over. Um, we can say something like, let's see. We'll say part two equals zero because we're gonna track our sum and we're gonna do a loop. So we'll say for instruction in re dot find all, and we're basically gonna we're gonna grab what we have here, um, like that, and we're gonna add some additional stuff in here. So we can say um, or do like that, or D-O-N-T, oops, I better make these, uh, we're gonna use single quotes in there, we better make them double quotes, uh, like this. So now, let's just do a simple print inst, not int, I made that same mistake in the video, uh, in the first video. So now if we run this, we can see we get, uh, let's see, uh, this has to do with, so, this, because we're doing capture groups here and there's no capture groups over here, we're getting kind of knocked out there. Let's just capture the whole thing. Let's see if we do it like this. Cool. So now we're getting instructions. And so we get mull, we get a don't, we get a mull, we get a mull, we get a don't. We get a, so we can do this here. We can say enabled equals true because we start enabled. Now we can come down here and start to process the instructions. So we can do, um, let's actually, this is like a great case for a match instruction. So we can do match inst case do like this so if we have a do instruction what do we want to do we're just going to say enabled equals true case don't enabled equals false case everything else and we're going to assume that's basically that's only going to be mole instructions um if we get something that's not a mole instruction we got a real problem um now we got this whole instruction so what are we going to say we'll say instruction and if we always start at the one two uh the one it starts at zero, one, two, three, four. So if we always go to four in, because it's going to be constant, 
and we always drop the last character. That'll drop the parentheses. Now we just have the numbers and the comma. So we can do split on the comma. Uh, and then we want to map int that, turn those into ints. And we can say x comma y equals. And that should give us our x and y value. Um, now we can say part 2 plus equals x times y. And if we run this, um, we get the same. Ah, so what I've shown here is actually part 2 is just part 1 again. Um, I'm doing the exact same thing as in part 1. In fact, we can uh, update part 1 to look like this. Let's see, put this here. Come here, we'll say part 1 equals 0. Part 1 equals that. Um, and now if we run this, we're going to get, now we're doing part 1 in this loop. Let's comment you out. We're going to do this all in one loop. Um, for part 2, we want to say, if enabled, part 2 plus equals x times y. And we get 48, which is the answer. Um, do it with input. Uh, 107 ending at 89. And we have 107 ending at 89. That is the that is the solution. Um, this is uh, I, I do I do like a chance to use these uh, the, the switch uh, match stuff that comes in that come in three ten or three eleven. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, that's the video. This is certainly part one in a couple ways to solve it, but this seems like the cleanest way to solve part two for sure. So uh, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with me today, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.